Yo, what is up guys, Duke at see here. Welcome to another video. We are over here at Alamo Cycleplex, just outside of San Antonio, Texas. As always, this video is brought to you by Rollick. Rollick is a company connecting consumers like you and me to a network of certified dealers like Alamo Cycleplex. Link in the description down below. This is the 2020 Yamaha R3. Again, huge shout out to Alamo Cycleplex here in San Antonio, Texas. And of course, an even bigger shout out to Rollick for sponsoring this video. Uh, what a lineup here. So you got the 2020 Honda CRF2, or excuse me, 450L. Gotta get used to that. The 2020 Kawasaki Ninja 400, and then the 2020 Yamaha R3 uh, Monster energy out. The good boys here at Alamo Cycleplex have put an Akrapovich, Akrapovich exhaust on it. And uh, are you ready for this? It's been nice and warm. Sounds really, really good. Uh, you guys already know, this is one of my favorite bikes. Boom, $5,599. So there's that. And that tag is coming with us. I forget how short first gear can be in some of these smaller bikes. So <laughs> I was expecting there to be just a little bit more. Wow, I will tell you what, every time I throw a leg over a Yamaha R3, it uh, exceeds expectations here. And the bar is set pretty high, right? Because I already know I really like this bike. It is something otherworldly. Beep boop. With the Akrapovich, Akrapovich race exhaust. It sounds even better than I could have ever imagined. The other thing you're going to notice is if you're watching this video on a mobile device, iPhone 10 and up, uh, that it's going to be the full wide screen. And that's because I am shooting in 3840 by 1774. That's probably the craziest aspect ratio that you're ever going to listen or hear about uh, from the old Duke of DC. But it's what it takes to get that ooey gooey widescreen on a lot of new devices these days that are going that length. Uh, and then the alternative is that if you're watching it on any other device or on a, you know, uh, YouTube on your computer or your television, it just has cinematic bars to some extent. So I'm cool with that. The Yamaha R3. The Yamaha R3 is undoubtedly I think one of my favorite entry-level motorcycles. The only other one I can even consider is the Ninja 400 if we're talking about only the super sport kind of variants of entry levels. Uh, and if we are talking about standards, I love the 2020 Honda CB300R. This thing, it is so rev happy. It's got so much power, that 321cc engine is producing about 30 horsepower, 20.4 pound-feet of torque. And you can feel all of it. The other thing, this bike does not feel underpowered at all. It actually feels brilliant. It feels beautifully balanced. The suspension, albeit uh, fixed, it is non-adjustable. It's fantastic. I mean, I don't find there to be a lot of issues in this. I think if you're going to track this bike, you might want to look into upgrading the suspension to something that's a bit more um, premium, a bit more usable on the track from a adjustability perspective. Otherwise, I can't even imagine why you would change everything on this bike. $5,599 on this variant with the Akrapovich exhaust, the Krapovich. I'm gonna say it three different ways this entire video. Um, the more expensive race livery. This comes in, of course, other standard colors from Yamaha, more solid colors. What is this? It is so much uh, smoother shifting without the clutch just coming off throttle on throttle, especially on a bike like this. You have a six speed manual gearbox, one down, five up configuration. No uh, electronic aids here for shifting, no quick shifter, no auto blipper, but that's okay. This bike is uh, it's kind of a purist bike in a way. It's like a new age purist bike because it does have ABS, anti-lock brake system, 
Um, that's about it though, you know, and at $5,600, that's not surprising. You don't see rider aids starting to get thrown on bikes until uh, the five-figure area, the five-figure department. The other thing about the R3, and a lot of the reason I love bikes like this, is that you feel like you're going fast. You know, we're going 45 miles an hour in fourth gear. You've got like eons worth of, of rev range before you hit the red line. I'm unnecessarily in this gear. But the thing that stands out to me is that I feel like I'm going fast. I, I, I truly feel like I'm getting a thrilling motorcycle experience where on a lot of these bigger super sport bikes of present day that have 200 horsepower, you're gonna be hard pressed to feel like you're going fast until you hit triple digits, which is just, it's unsustainable on uh, public roads. This one, it has such an amazing value to experience factor, right? Value to money for $5,600. If you stack it on a track, which I think is inevitable that you will, you're gonna crash. It's, I, you know, you're pushing the limits of the motorcycle. And if you don't, that's amazing. I, I don't wish that upon anybody, but if you do, I think you'd rather do it on this than on your brand new Ducati V4R that you just spent, you know, your down payment for your house on. Dude, it's so funny how this sounds like a little baby R1. Now, I know that there's no cross-plane crank technology in the R3. It's missing quite a few cylinders to make that even something to talk about. Um, but it still has that really throaty rumble, especially with the Acura exhaust here. Now, trust me, your results will vary on a fully stock standard motorcycle that has the uh, the old Yamaha canister on it. But it, you know, this bike, $5,600 with the Acura. So there's something right there. Like, holy crap, you're getting so much value from, uh, I'm gonna shout out Alamo Cycleplex again for just being this, for being this absolutely value focused dealership they're really trying to give they're really trying to give their consumers an opportunity to experience these bikes in the best way possible uh, I just I adore this motorcycle I think that more importantly you know I'm not gonna find twisty roads within five minutes of the dealership and that's basically the distance in which I have today uh, so this is just a detailed breakdown I've given you guys all the stats I've given you the prices uh, I can't oh my god the speed bumps come out of nowhere I just can't stress enough like the further along you get into your riding career i think the less important these new and and pushing the limit motorcycles become it, it could just be me but i have such a good time on bikes like this and sometimes i don't have a good experience on the most expensive most uh advanced fastest motorcycles and it's just because you can't you can't use them now if you're going to track days or you're someone like max wrist who is pushing the limits all the time then i totally get it those bikes are for you but if you're like me and you love riding motorcycles because it's just a great experience it feels really fun um for me it out it also provided me with value from a convenience perspective because a lot of these bikes give you abilities to do things like go on HOV lanes high occupancy vehicle or express lanes or anything like that uh, for free for free for discounted rates and then on top of that I used to go to this this building uh, right outside of Washington DC for work in Arlington that charged employees $155 a month for parking okay something that the company wouldn't pay for which is just in itself kind of a travesty because they expect you to come to work and how are you going to get there uh aside from that i was able to my my monthly bill on my motorcycle then at the time the aprilia tuono was 150 dollars a month right so and i could park it for free because there was motorcycle parking right on site so instead of paying 155 dollars to park my car i bought a bike I was able to take HOV lanes, I was able to do all these different convenient things, and in the end, I was saving $5 a month. Absolutely amazing, right? And that's the value, that's the convenience that motorcycles have to me uh, that just can't be beat. The other thing on, on a bike like this is that it's so ridiculously comfortable. It's so ridiculously usable. It feels like if you want, 
you could have a very sporty experience on this with with a few minor adjustments that may be capable with the standard equipment you could increase the rake of your steering you could lower the bars a bit you could get a seat that puts you a little higher up to give you that more super sport bike riding position that a lot of people are looking for it would really just give you everything you would need let's go be in the sun there we go look at that i put a gallon of gas in it and two little gas notches notchlings went up man i do love the maneuverability on this thing i mean i'm not finding any roads today but my god i think the next video i do on an r3 should be at circuit of the americas like a track event i don't know how i need to borrow one for a track thing <laughs> i uh i can't possibly see a laundry list of uh dealerships signing up for that one guarantee that guy didn't see me the wind protection from just this you know obviously this being a sport bike it's got full fairings in the front here and they are fantastic they work like a champ um, this bike could easily cruise on the highway you've seen in my 2019 or uh, 2018 Yamaha R3 review I took it up on I-95 to about 75 80 miles per hour now the microphone was unbearably annoying at that speed because of the old setup I was using but what wasn't annoying at all was the amount of power left in the tank these r3s will do 100 plus miles per hour just over it and you can tell they're they're geared pretty brilliantly they do have uh, a little bit more favorable top end than low end torque which is okay for a bike like this especially with the 12,500 uh, rpm redline where really you should be living in the 8 to 10 range if you want power, if you want to be on the power, whereas right now I'm just cruising in 6th gear at 55, and it's it's a it's a piece of cake. It's really a, a pleasant ride. I mean, what a beautiful day, too. I can't complain about anything, really. It's 68 degrees, sunny. Mm. The brakes feel great. Nothing fancy up front here. We've got Nissan calipers single rotor in the front which is you know just fine for a bike that weighs in the uh, mid 300s so easy to ride here we are back at alamo cycleplex again enormous huge shout out to them for providing these fantastic motorcycles um, nothing has changed I love the R3 that has and probably will stay the case up until the point where I inevitably buy one of these bikes all right let's see if I need to put fuel <laughs> in the Ninja 4 okay guys this is uh, it's just it's such a great motorcycle I mean Yamaha has done such a beautiful job this is kind of a special case too because I'm about to ride the Ninja 400 immediately after our, the R3 arguably two of the most popular videos that I've put on my channel the Ninja 400 and the R3 have passed so what am I going to think of these when they're back-to-back -back reviews um, just right off the bat I do think you know I probably wouldn't purchase the R3 in their race uh, library I'd purchase it in a solid color but I still like it I st and then I still think it looks good I would 100% add the uh, exact same exhaust that they've got on this one which just seems to be yeah it's just like a little slip-on uh acra the r3 just looks better it just looks more but it's 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 i don't know because the 400 looks amazing like look at this this doesn't look bad and then of course this is this is just a beast we're going to talk about this later um yeah i'm 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 all over the place i obviously adore the yamaha r3 i think it's uh, it's just brilliant i think they've done such an exceptional job again and then for 5600 bucks they've already put the tail tidy on too so it's just like all the you know the two pretty standard things people do tail tidy slip on exhaust have already been done i love that i love that um you could even get you know more appropriate suspension on the front here for a few thousand more um now obviously then you're talking about a bike that's 
now kind of get into the more expensive world uh, and you could go get something used like an SV650 uh, or even an R6 that has more adjustability, more out of the box trackability. I don't know, I'd still pick this. I just really enjoy it. I think it's a great bike. Good job, Yamaha. And thank you, Alamo Cycleplex. Thank you, Rollick. If uh, you are not from this area and you're looking for one of these, please hit that first link in the description for GoRollick.com and try and find a deal on any number of different power sport items. If you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button right there. Or is it there? It's there? I don't know. Wherever it is. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Make sure to comment down below. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.